Hey up YouTube, hope you're doing well. Today, actually I've not brought them up yet for uh, to show you, but today I'm going to be um, taking out my begonias that I, I put in trays at home last year. We're going to be taking them out and I'm going to show you how I'm going to attempt to overwinter the tubers. Um, because of course begonia tubers are not winter hardy, so especially if you've got them in containers, this is the ideal time, if not a little bit earlier, um, to take them out, put them in containers and, and overwinter them in a, in a cool, but not, but, but a cool, but frost safe place. So I'll see you in a second. <laughs> Here are the begonias. These are, well, to be honest, I've no idea what variety they are. They were a free thing from Parker's last year when I ordered my potato, uh, sea potatoes. But I didn't think they'd come to anything, but they did. And they were really, really pretty. So I've decided to have a go at overwintering the combs or the tubers or whatever you want to call them. It feels like they're ready. And, uh, and giving them something nicer to grow in next year. Um, so I'll get these down out of the way. I'll point you at the bench. And, uh, and we'll crack on. Right, so. What I'm going to do. Is all, I'm going to try the overwintering. In compost method. So I'm going to fill this seed tray. Now I've gone for a seed tray. Uh, that has the drainage holes in the bottom Purely and simply because when you're overwintering your gladioli, uh, not gladioli, begonias When you're overwintering them, they need to be moist But not wet. I'm not compacting this compost down Intentionally because I have to push the the combs down into it. So yeah, I'm using a tray with holes in the bottom uh, like so purely in, uh, to aid the movement of uh, water really because like I said they want to be wet they want to be moist but not wet otherwise they will rot so we'll move that out of the way a sec and let's see if we can get one of my oh, trays of begonias into shot now this is going to be messy what I'm going to do is I'm just going to give them a quick prune normally I wouldn't bother doing this I think but for the sake of the camera We'll remove some of this greenery so you can see what I'm looking at. Uh, let me just grab a oh, one there. bucket for, for waste. And you see, th these guys are actually quite green still, but I think that's that's to do with the mild start to winter we've had. But I'm going to do one on camera. My intention today is to do one on camera and then I'm going to use the rest as B-roll because then what I'm going to do is we're going to talk about um, jobs for winter, jobs for November, um, that sort of thing really. Uh, so yeah, so that should be a bit more visible for you guys. Let me just check. Yeah, it certainly seems to be. Where are we? Okay, so you can see this one. Now what you want to do normally is you will have left these to dry out for two or three days. Um, at least, really, before trying to do this. But these feel pretty ready. So what you want to do is you get this stalk here. And you just want to try and pull it away from your comb. Without too much aggression. It should come away quite easily. If it doesn't come away too easily... It's not ready. You know, start, stop what you're doing. Put it to one, put it down. Put some gloves on because I've got to go shopping after this and I don't want to be caked in mud. Um, and leave them for another few days. Uh, just let them dry out just a little bit more and you'll find the stalks will come away a lot easier. Hey guys, real quick one. Don't forget, like, share and subscribe the video and the channel. I'm, I'm terrible at this, I'm sorry. Um, but it really does help me out. It's a vital thing. It helps me grow as a channel 
and a community. So if you can do those three things, that's uh, press the like button or the thumbs up button, press the share button, put it on your Facebook, your Twitter, your Instagram, whatever you've got, and press that subscribe button if it is red. So, to, so let's get back to the gardening, eh? Now this one looks like it was very vigorous. This one is also still very green. So, but no, they're coming off quite easily. Didn't expect these to come off quite so easily. I was sort of doing this video as a, as a, as a last minute thing. Um, I've been poorly all week, so I've not been able to get down the plot really to record a video. Yeah, they all came off nice and easy. So, there we go. Now, for me, if I remember rightly, it's quite simple. There was three tubers in each container. So we're just going to have a route around in here, looking for these tubers. I think there's one in there. Yeah, one here. One there. Where well, I wasn't expecting there to be one, to be honest. So I think there's more than three in each container by the looks of things. Look at that, doesn't it look like some of aliens? We're just going to have to go give some of these a wash so that you can see the next stage. So I thought there was only three tubers. There's five there. <laughs> Yeah, well, doesn't matter. Uh, we'll go dump this out onto a bed. And I'll be right back. I'll give some of these a wash up so that you can see what we're doing. And then we'll go on to the next stage. And we're back. So some of these, <laughs> I don't know whether I planted them upside down or what, but some of these aren't that descript. But and to go, what I was saying is you can, should be able to tell on camera that there's a, a bulbous side, so there's a, a rounded side, and then normally there's a concave side. Now, obviously, when you're overwintering, it's actually a little bit more obvious because you've got the growth points. If I show you on this one, for example, in actual fact, the concave side is on the is on the bottom, but it's grown out of here. So, you know, I don't know whether I planted it upside down and the, and it's adapted or what. So I'm going to overwinter it with that point, pointing up. But normally you've got a round side and a concave side, and the concave side is your top. So we'll bring back the seed tray. I'm not too worried about mixing these up. And all I'm going to do is push them in, leaving the tops exposed. Now with there being so many in this, so with there being so many in there, I mean you can nudge them right up against one another, they're not going to they're not going to mind, so squeeze them in as best you can. And there we go. I'm going to get on and do the other ones. And whilst I'm doing those, and maybe whilst I'm doing some harvesting out on the plot, or maybe some jobs, depending on how well, how well I talk through things, I'm going to be voicing over some jobs... I'm not too sure how many there's going to be, but some jobs that you need to be getting done now and heading into winter and things that, uh, that new allotment holders can be doing now to make their life easier next year. Okay, so looking at jobs that we can be doing in November, heading into late autumn. There's actually quite a lot that a gardener can still be doing at this time of year. So you can still be planting out your garlic, your onions, and your autumn growing shallots. Actually, I've forgotten to do shallots this week. I'll have to do them in spring. Very simple to do. I'll try and remember to put a clip in, but obviously, if you subscribe to the channel, you will have seen me doing the onions and garlic last week. Pruning your fruit bushes. That's an important job for November heading into late autumn. Uh, they can be done right the way through until March, but it's a job that you can get done now. And the benefit behind doing it now leads on to another job, which is your hardwood cuttings. Once again, I'll try and remember to put a card up in the top corner, but all that wood that you prune off your berry trees, so your raspberries, uh, not your raspberries, your black currants, red currants, white currants, uh, gooseberries, 
all things like that. All that wood that you can cu cu cut off can pretty much be turned into another plant. So don't forget, check out the video up in the top corner now. After you've watched this one, of course. Other jobs, your autumn fruit in raspberries, along the same veins as the uh, fruit bushes, they want chopping right back. Autumn fruit in raspberries, only fruit on that year's growth. So anything that's grown this year will not bear fruit next year. Trim them right back to soil level, leaving an inch or two so that you can identify where the canes are for next year's growth. One personal hint is all the canes that you trim off of the raspberries, the, the longer sturdy ones, of course, you can turn them into plant supports, which you may want for the next job, which is to stake Brussels sprouts. If you're in a particularly windy or open area, you want to support your Brussels sprouts. If they get blown about and shift too much in the wind, it can cause your sprouts to blow and not produce a nice little sprout. And they'll just blow up and up and they'll be no good as a sprout. There's other uses for them, but they're no good as a, as a boiled or roasted sprout. And don't forget this time of year, you still need to be netting your brassicas or pretty much anything you've got growing now. Birds, and with how mild the winter's been so far, how the autumn's been, um, butterflies, so your caterpillars, slugs, snails are all still an issue. So keep those, uh, those brassicas netted as well as new seedlings. And harvesting this time of year. Harvesting is not over if you've planned your year correctly. You can still be harvesting cauliflowers, you can still be harvesting celeriac, of course, Brussels sprouts, as we've just said. Carrots, main crop um, type, sort of Nantes 5, planted a little bit later in the season, you can still be harvesting them. As well as cabbages, red, white, savoy will be next year, but red and white certainly, if you got them in um, a few months ago, you maybe get stacked to get crops from them now. One of the jobs I advise for new allotment holders at this time of year is to not underestimate the value of winter. Yes, you may not be able to grow anything on your plot right now, but what you can do is prep for next year. And trust me, that is worth its weight in gold. If you can get a bed prepped and put away neatly, tidily, um, put to rest, mulched and covered either with cardboard or you know, plastic or whatever you choose to use, it's a job less to do A, in the heat of spring, summer, but also when you're busy with that new season stuff, you haven't got to worry about prepping the space for them. If you've got a neatly prepared bed, it just takes a rake, maybe a little bit of fertilizer, and you're good to go. That value of taking care of your beds and mulching them at this time of year is absolutely paramount. If you want to be sowing things now, there are varieties of peas and broad beans that can be sown now. Uh, to name one or two of each uh, pea. You've got meteor you can sow now, as well as your sweet peas for a flower. Broad beans, you want to be looking at a variety called Aquadulce Claudia. I put mine in with my onions and garlic last week. Once again, I'll try and remember to put a card in somewhere along this video. Another harvest that you could be having now is parsnips. You want to be overwintering your dahlias at the same method as you've seen me do the begonias in this video. If you're looking for a bit of springtime colour, you could be planting out spring bulbs. That could be anything from alliums to crocuses to hyacinths to tulips to um, daffodils or narciss, narciss I can't, daffodils. Um, they can all be planted this time of year for an early burst of colour next year. And I've just seen one that I think I might get. That's some bluebells. I haven't got any bluebells. So I think that pretty much covers us for jobs that you can be doing going into uh, November, early autumn and early winter. Oh, no, there's one I haven't mentioned, actually, which is one that I'll be doing in an upcoming video, and that's pruning fruit trees. 
Um, now that is purely your non-stone fruit trees. So that's uh, things like apple, pear, quince, things like that. Cherry, plum, all those sorts of things get done in spring. Obviously I will do a video on that when it's time. But I think next week's video is going to be primarily sorting out all the fruit trees, bushes and cuttings and things like that for next year's expansion. So that's that's quite a list to be getting on with, especially in these cold times. Don't forget, as Sean used to always say, do a little, do it often. Don't get overwhelmed, especially in new allotment holders. Don't think, ah, I've got all this space. Just do a little bit. If you work through winter, focus on a little bit at a time every week, you will get there, trust me. So that's going to be it from me today, guys. I'll see you next week with a new video. Ta-da for now.